Welcome to my channel. Today, I will continue to share the story of Stevenson. His wife cheated on him. Let's start the narration. Please subscribe to the channel first. My wife, Mina, a just turned 30 young woman, has a perfect figure and a beautiful face. She attracts a lot of attention when walking on the street. So when she said she wanted to join a fitness training camp, I opposed it not because I didn't trust her, but because I didn't trust other men. Because Mina is too beautiful, it's hard for anyone to resist the desire to swallow her whole when she's wearing tight yoga pants and doing various exercises. But as a housewife after marriage, I couldn't refuse when I saw the anticipation in her eyes. Today is the gathering party for the fitness training camp, and my wife went out in the afternoon wearing a blue enchanting dress, with a touch of innocence compared to usual. As the night approached 12 o'clock and she still hadn't returned, not even answering the phone, I couldn't help but feel anxious. Just when I couldn't sit still anymore and was about to go out to look for her, I received a call from Mina's phone. Wife, where are you? I asked. A drunken man's voice came from the other end of the conversation, hurry up and come pick up your wife, my inner alertness rose, and I questioned who the person was, but there was no answer. The background was filled with noisy music and clamor, and a burst of laughter came through, igniting my anger in an instant. Just as I was about to burst out with curses, the person on the other end shouted with a slurred voice. Roommate 88, your wife just got drunk. If you don't come, we won't be polite. Before the person could finish speaking, it seemed like someone snatched the phone away, followed by a burst of manic laughter, and the call was disconnected. What happened to Mina, I didn't dare to delay and rush there, speeding all the way. However, when I arrived, I only saw Mina lying alone on the sofa in the private room, and everyone else was gone. The room was in a mess, completely chaotic, and I could easily imagine the scene of debauchery that had taken place before. What kind of madness did those people go through to make such a mess, Mina was still in a drunken stupor, lying on the sofa. I called her name many times and shook her body, trying to wake her up. But Mina was completely passed out from heavy drinking, not moving at all. I prepared to carry her back to the car when I noticed something. Mina's low-cut dress was prone to wardrobe malfunctions, and one side of the strap was very loose. I put Mina down again and inspected her entire body. I realized that her dress was disheveled, and the zipper on the back was not fully closed, as if it had been taken off and put back on again. In such a messy private room, with my seductive and sexy wife lying unconscious, seemingly stripped naked, and thinking about the laughter of the man on the phone, I had a bad feeling. But I told myself not to suspect and doubt, that my wife wouldn't betray me. I carried Mina downstairs and placed her on the back seat of the car. Just as I was about to close the door, Mina unconsciously moved, lifting up one side of her skirt. That's when I was shocked to discover that Mina was wearing nothing underneath. My hands on the steering wheel were trembling throughout the entire journey. After bringing Mina back home and placing her on the bed, I began to carefully examine her body. When I noticed some redness and bruises on her intimate area and knees, I felt as if I had been struck by lightning, unable to utter a single curse for a while. Mina had actually cheated on me. Was it the man from the phone just now? Was it one person or multiple people? What exactly happened? I couldn't sleep all night, and the next day Mina woke up groggily, smiling at me as soon as she saw me. Before I could ask her about her missing underwear, Mina proactively confessed, I drank too much yesterday and threw up in the bathroom, so I took off my underwear. Mina hugged me and kissed my face, blushing, darling, I'm sorry for making you worry. I won't go wild like that again, faced with Mina's proactive confession, what could I say? She had already confessed, cutting off my questioning. I could only comfort her and ask her not to drink too much in the future. Mina kissed me on the cheek, got up, and changed clothes to get ready for the fitness training camp. That so-called fitness training camp was a training program she had just joined. They claimed that after the camp, they could arrange certification exams and job placements, allowing participants to work as personal trainers in their fitness club, with a salary of $20,000. After joining that fitness training camp, Mina often went out wearing tight yoga pants, which made me extremely uncomfortable. Despite the pants being tight and accentuating her body's contours, I felt like they were overly provocative, especially when my wife wore them, it felt like she was deliberately enticing others. 
Originally, I wasn't keen on Mina being in the limelight, especially after the incident with her underwear disappearing last night, which intensified my unsettling feeling. They say women have a sixth sense, but I believe men have it too. Especially in the morning, when my wife went out wearing yoga pants, and before leaving, she specifically chose a sexy thing. I decided to go to the location of Mina's training to see for myself. At noon, I arrived at the sports center where my wife was training and managed to sneak in while the security was distracted. As soon as I entered the training hall, I realized something was off. The place was filled with male trainers and female trainees, and the male trainers were constantly instructing the female trainees to perform provocative movements while shamelessly flirting with them. Was this the so-called personal training Mina was receiving? Were these men training her, how can you touch that area, coach? I heard a woman shout, and I walked over to hide by the door and observe. I was just helping you stretch. Your muscles are stiff, so I was massaging you a bit, the man replied, sounding slightly annoyed. He used his position as a coach to explain his actions, never once saying it was an accident or sorry the man was taller than the woman. And he spoke with a commanding tone, exhibiting a manipulative nature. He casually mentioned how he could help the trainees pass their certification smoothly, using persuasive techniques to silence the women. I listened with a furrowed brow, realizing that there was more to these male trainers than meets the eye. There was a distinct stench of manipulating women through pickup artist, PUA, techniques. As I continued to observe, I found that this behavior was not an isolated incident. Shockingly, some trainers even put their hands inside the female trainees' clothes or got uncomfortably close to their sensitive areas. I saw several male trainers taking advantage of the opportunity while assisting female trainees with sit-ups, placing their hands on the women's buttocks and sliding their palms between their waist and hips. The more I watched, the more desperate I became. I searched the entire training camp and couldn't find any trace of my wife. Just then, I heard noisy cheers coming from a distance. I quickly ran over while no one was paying attention, passing through an empty corridor until I reached the end, where there was a room. The door was locked, so I could only look inside through the glass on the door. Inside, there were many people gathered. In the middle of the room, two girls wearing only underwear were kneeling on chairs, and behind them was a balloon. Several muscular men were lined up behind the balloon, each one observing and making suggestive gestures towards the girls, accompanied by laughter. What is this? I became anxious, and the host in the middle blew a whistle, catching my attention. I quickly looked up. The men began taking turns using their bodies to pop the balloons, and one of the women, who was lying down with disheveled hair, looked remarkably similar to my wife, especially her choice of underwear that day, which seemed identical to the one she carefully selected. I kept adjusting my angle to get a better look, but I couldn't see the person's face clearly. According to the host's explanation, the team that popped 20 balloons first would be the winning team, and the losing female participants would be punished by the men. The nature of the punishment was all too evident and unsightly. As the team that the woman, who appeared to be my wife, was in, approached popping the final balloon, one of the men suddenly let go of the balloon and forcefully pulled the woman's underwear down to her knees. Amid the cheering and laughter from the surrounding men and women, the woman, who had been silently enduring, biting her hand while lowering her head against the back of the chair, immediately raised her head. Her flowing hair was thrown back, revealing a stunningly beautiful face. I widened my eyes in shock. This woman. I clenched my fist, unable to believe my eyes. My wife was actually doing such despicable things behind my back in this place, but then, it occurred to me that Mina didn't seem willing. Her expression didn't exude the lust of a harlot but rather the helplessness and compromise of someone coerced. Despite being in full view, the men behind Mina continued their actions, harassing and disrespecting her without regard for her resistance. The people around them had no intention of stopping, instead, they enthusiastically cheered and made lewd remarks. I was furious and about to kick the door open when suddenly someone appeared beside me and forcefully pulled me to the side. Who are you? Thinking that I had been discovered by someone from the training camp, I didn't hesitate and threw a punch at the person in front of me. What good would it do if you go in now? The person, who I had punched, didn't show any malice but instead blocked my path, preventing me from attempting to kick down the door. I looked at him cautiously, unaffected by his presence, and questioned, why should I believe you? 
What do you want? He sighed, placing his hands on his hips, and glanced towards the room. I instinctively followed his gaze and noticed that the situation inside was even more chaotic. Several men surrounded Mina, each one looking down on her like she was some submissive dog, ready to pounce at any moment. My wife has been harmed by this training camp, and she has. Left me, the man lowered his gaze, his expression filled with sadness. Left you? Did you get a divorce? No, she's dead, I was shocked and asked, was she killed by this training camp? He replied, yes and no, I nervously swallowed and took another glance at the blurred chaos inside the room, my gaze piercing through the layers of flesh. It seemed like I could see Mina, fallen and desperate, looking towards me, pleading for help. After struggling to regain my composure, I followed the man cautiously as we left the training camp and found a cafe where we could talk openly. He introduced himself as Sam, a tutor. Due to policy changes, he lost his job, and since he hadn't obtained a teaching certificate, it was extremely difficult for him to find employment again. So, until he successfully obtained his teaching certification, his family had no stable source of income. Sam's wife came from a humble background as a factory worker with limited education. However, she was undeniably beautiful. After marrying Sam, she quit her job on the factory assembly line and became a housewife, taking care of household chores and selling handmade crafts online to earn some extra money. When Sam lost his job, his wife saw the financial strain it put on their family. Despite her late-night efforts to make more crafts, their expenses continued to exceed their income, and their savings were limited. She didn't want to use up their savings, as they wanted to save it for their future children. So, she started looking for other opportunities. By chance, she came across an advertisement for this training camp. The salary was attractive, although the requirements were somewhat high, focusing on physical appearance and only accepting good-looking female trainees. There was also a need for training and certification. However, she had confidence in her own looks and was eager to earn more money quickly. Therefore, she decided to enroll. At that time, Sam was fully focused on preparing for his certification exams, spending most of his time studying in his room. He wasn't fully aware of what his wife was up to and only knew that she had taken a job as a personal trainer. He didn't pay much attention to her well-being. In retrospect, I wasn't a good husband. Diana's health was visibly deteriorating, but I never asked if something was wrong. Whenever she tried to talk to me about something, I would dismiss her irritably, asking her not to bother me. Sam spoke, his hands tightly clenched together, his knuckles turning red, but his eyes were even redder with anguish. I looked at the distressed man in front of me and comfortingly patted his shoulder, silently vowing not to repeat his mistakes. Then what happened next, later, I found out she was pregnant, but we hadn't been intimate during that time, so it couldn't be my child. I unreasonably accused her of infidelity without considering any other possibilities. Suddenly, Sam looked up, gripping my hand and said, Do you know how insane I was at that time? Unable to accept her infidelity and overwhelmed by the stress of my exams, I publicly accused her online, spewing venomous words. I complained about how hard I was working to support the family while she just casually made crafts at home and had the audacity to cheat on me. I involuntarily tightened my grip on my fingers. I, too, had entertained such malicious thoughts, wanting to ruin Mina's reputation as a means of relieving my own anger. And then, before I could even divorce my wife, she. She took her own life. She left a suicide note. Explaining the entire story behind this training camp. That's when I realized I had misunderstood my wife. She had been living in agony during that time, feeling like life was not worth living, and I failed to understand her. She had to bear it all alone. Sam lowered his head deeply, trying to bury the memories of his frantic and irrational self. He took out his phone and showed me a photo of the suicide note. It was written in his wife's elegant handwriting, which resembled Nina's handwriting. The person who wrote those words must have been as gentle and kind-hearted as Mina. As I carefully read the contents, I felt a chilling sensation, unable to believe how that woman, who had endured such humiliation, managed to suppress her tears and prevent her words from being consumed by hatred. They always touched my breasts under various pretexts, forced me to undress, made me crawl on the ground like an animal, trampled on me, pulled my hair, and demanded that I perform oral acts on them. I tried to resist them, but there was no way. They even drugged me, got me intoxicated, and then assaulted me. 
They recorded videos to blackmail me, comma, as I reached that point, I took a sharp breath, realizing that she wrote, they instead of he. I was reminded of the scene where Mina was disheveled and without underwear at the KTV, and a deep hatred surged within me. A bunch of animals. They are worse than pigs and dogs. They don't deserve to be called human beings, I desperately suppressed the urge to storm into the training camp and crush those scumbags like ants. And continued reading. I endured and endured, just hoping for time to pass quickly so that I could get my personal training certification and leave. But later, I realized that it was all a scam. It was a filthy den designed to seduce and train women as sex slaves. But I couldn't speak up. On one hand, they had videos as evidence, and on the other hand, they constantly manipulated me, asking if my husband would still want me after being used so many times. I felt dirty, truly dirty. I felt like I only deserved to go to hell, with my mouth agape, I read until the end, feeling like a demonic hand had gripped my heart, twisting it into knots. It was an agonizing feeling that lingered within me. As expected, he despised me. But I don't blame him. His rage came from love, and his insults were because I was useless, always relying on him for support. I won't appear before you and dirty your eyes anymore. Let's not be miserable lovebirds in the next life, I numbly handed the phone back to Sam, and for almost three minutes, we sat there in silence, overwhelmed by the weight of our emotions. Please accept my condolences. So, you became a security guard here to gather evidence, driven by my urgent desire to help, I skipped the pleasantries and went straight to the point wanting to understand Sam's thoughts. Sam nodded and said, yes, I became a security guard to gather clues and evidence. When I saw you sneaking in earlier, I suspected that you might have experienced something similar to me. That's why I pretended not to notice and let you in, it suddenly dawned on me, as I had wondered why it was so easy for me to infiltrate this place. It turned out I had a comrade in arms helping me. How long have you been here, including the training, it's been six months. I finally managed to become the head of security. Which gives me access to enter and exit, I raised an eyebrow skeptically and asked, so, you should have gathered a lot of evidence during all this time. Why haven't you reported it to the police, Sam sighed and said, this training camp has a well-crafted facade, and it seems like there are influential people involved. It's not easy to expose them. I have collected a lot of videos and have my wife's suicide note, but to ensure foolproof evidence, I need testimonies from insiders, witnesses, yes, witnesses. I need someone on the inside to corroborate the evidence, but I currently don't have a way in because I don't know anyone there. The coaches are likely untouchable, so I have to start from the female trainees. You see. Sam didn't finish his sentence, but I understood what he meant. Continuing his train of thought, I said, so, you need me to persuade my wife, right? Yes, exactly. It might not be easy, though, because the female trainees in the camp are subjected to invisible manipulation from the very first day. They are afraid to speak up about the violation they experience, and it's easy to trigger their emotions. So, you have to handle the conversation with your wife carefully, not to upset her. Don't worry, I will ensure my wife's safety. After a lengthy and detailed conversation with Sam, we bid each other farewell and prepared to fulfill our respective roles. That night, Mina came home. With Sam's guidance, I immediately noticed her pale complexion and exhausted demeanor. I quickly approached her, reaching out to support her, and said, Are you okay, honey? Unexpectedly, Mina's face filled with fear, and she pushed me away, saying, I'm fine. Just don't touch me, I asked her insistently, why, and locked eyes with Mina, but she avoided my gaze, keeping her head down. I initially wanted to press her forcefully to tell me the truth. But thinking about Sam's warning and what happened to his wife, I softened my approach and pretended to be oblivious, comforting her, why don't you take a relaxing hot bath, ah, Mina looked at me affectionately, and I could see tears glistening in her eyes. Mina took a long time in the bath this time, but I refrained from hurrying her because I knew she might be crying in the bathroom. After her bath, Mina seemed to be in a better state, and she didn't mind me touching her anymore. I felt it was a good opportunity and didn't want to give up easily. I pulled her onto the sofa, held her hands, and gently asked, Darling, do you feel like our life is difficult? Mina shook her head and said, No, not at all. With you by my side, it's not difficult. Besides, this will all pass. She paused, pursed her lips, and seemed to remember something, her gaze suddenly turning gloomy. 
I continued, do you think I'm terrible? Do you resent me for not providing you with a better life during this time, for making you? What nonsense are you talking about? Mina covered my mouth with her hand and said, there's no resentment. I love you with all my heart. How could I blame you? I smiled, feeling that it was time to get to the point. I laid the groundwork and said, I feel the same way. I don't think it's difficult either. I love you very much. So, my dear, I don't want to see you doing something you don't want to do for me, even if it pays a lot of money, Mina didn't expect me to say that. She froze for a moment, then panicked and moved back slightly, stammering, Husband, what are you saying? What do you mean by want or don't want? I. I know everything, but I don't blame you, Mina's eyes widened instantly, and she gasped, trembling all over. You. You know? About the training camp. Did you go there? Or did someone? I stood up, looked into Mina's eyes seriously, and said, I went there, and I saw it. Mina suddenly broke down, grabbing at her hair with her hands, and shouted at me, her voice hoarse, What did you see? Did you see me? When did you see me? Yesterday? Today? Do you find it disgusting? Is that it? I embraced Mina tightly, trying to stabilize her, and said, Yes, I saw it today. At first, I found it disgusting, but I understand now that you were forced into it. You did it for the money, to make our lives a little better. In the end, it's because I'm useless, isn't it? You will always be the wife I love, Mina. No matter what, you are beautiful and pure in my heart. So, don't let those people brainwash you anymore. They won't give you any certification. It's all a scam, you know, I shook Mina's shoulders firmly, trying to make her focus her gaze and become more clear-headed. Mina looked dazedly at me and said, a scam? That's not possible. The training camp has a business license, and they. They said I would be certified in a couple of days. Then I can become a personal trainer, earning more than 20000 a month, husband. How could it be? As she spoke, tears streamed down her face, and she collapsed into my arms. Don't deceive yourself anymore, my dear. Haven't you also had doubts? Don't hold on to illusions anymore, Mina cried, her eyes turning red, and sobbed, how could it be? The training camp has a license. It. It clearly. Mina probably had doubts about the training camp too, but for the sake of money and the influence of their PUA tactics, she chose to keep the pain to herself. Join me in destroying this den of evil and rescuing others, okay? I continuously reassured Mina and told her about Sam and what happened to Sam's wife. In the end, Mina woke up and decided to step forward as a witness and report the training camp with us. In the early hours of the morning, I heard Mina crying. Worried that something had happened, I quickly sat up, turned on the bedside lamp, and wiped away her tears, asking her what was wrong. Mina hugged me tightly, tears streaming down her face, and asked, Will you stop loving me? Will you find me dirty? If you really despise me, just say it. I'll sleep in the living room from now on, as long as. As long as we don't get divorced. I kissed Mina and then pretended to be annoyed, saying, What nonsense are you talking about? Divorce? Don't even think about it. Do you want me to lose out? What am I going to do without such a wonderful wife like you? Do you want to get divorced and find another man? Mina quickly shook her head, continuously expressing her love for me, and emphasizing that she hadn't been physically violated by the people from the training camp, only subjected to harassment and psychological abuse. After finally comforting Mina, I didn't sleep for long before it was already morning. Sam was efficient and had contacted the police, so the next morning, they surrounded the training camp, successfully shutting down the den. I accompanied my wife to the police station to make a statement. After everything was over, I asked Sam for help and requested him to contact a reliable psychologist to provide psychological counseling for Mina. Sam readily agreed, and since we had become close like brothers, he directly referred to Mina as his sister-in-law. It was quickly arranged. During the certification period, I stayed in frequent contact with Sam. He said he had decided to take over the training camp's property, keep the equipment, and develop it into a regular fitness training center. He asked if I had the intention to join him. 
Initially, I refused, but I failed my certification because of my poor proficiency in Mandarin. Thinking about the upcoming retake, I grew restless, so I decided to join Sam and help run the fitness center. After half a year of psychological adjustment, Mina improved significantly. Knowing that I was partnering with Sam, she actively offered to help with marketing and promotion, suggesting that our center could focus on attracting customers with attractive female instructors. Sam and I thought it was a good idea, but we were also concerned about the possibility of a repeat of the previous training camp situation. We even argued about it. It's easy for things to go wrong when it involves attractive women, you know, but previously, the instructors were mostly men. Now, it's women in charge, and the likelihood of something bad happening like before is low. Do you think having women in charge guarantees nothing will happen? People are selfish. Who knows if some would be willing to use seduction for money? How can you guarantee that the training camp won't develop into a situation where people are coerced through sexual means? After a long argument, Sam and I ultimately decided to temporarily use attractive female instructors as a marketing tactic to attract male participants until the training camp was fully established. What surprised us was that there were far more female students coming to our center than male students. Sam and I found it strange and added a line on the registration form to indicate the reason for joining. To our surprise, the trend at our training camp was completely opposite to the marketing strategy we had used. The female students were worried about potential misconduct from male instructors and feared sexual harassment. They had heard that our center had only female instructors, so they felt more at ease. It's quite ridiculous. We were only thinking about making money and trying to maximize our profits from the perspective of the seller, but little did we know that only by changing our mindset and considering things from the buyer's perspective could we truly achieve sufficient profitability. As Sam and I shifted our operational strategy to cater to women's perspectives, we successfully attracted a significant number of female students to our training camp. As the camp expanded and stabilized, we decided to select a few outstanding instructors to specialize in training male students, based on individual preferences. This allowed us to have a more balanced mix of instructors. Our training camp continued to thrive, and Sam also found a woman he connected with during work. They dated for two years and eventually got married. Recently, I heard they had a child. With the support of this woman, Sam gradually emerged from the pain of losing his wife. His dark circles lightened, and he became more energetic, radiant, and full of life. It was truly a joyous and celebratory transformation. Meanwhile, my life with my wife Mina also improved. They say money isn't everything, but without money, it's difficult to accomplish much. Since starting the training camp, our lives became more comfortable. We no longer had to worry about what to eat for dinner, whether to buy certain groceries or meat, and so on. Life became less burdensome, and we had more room for thought and consideration. Days passed by quietly, and as long as we didn't bring it up, no one knew that my wife had once fallen into a dark pit, and nobody could believe that the now beautiful and radiant Mina had experienced such despair and degradation. Time has a way of healing wounds, turning them into faint scars. When others inquire, you can smile and say it was the price of youthful recklessness exchanged for personal growth. If a wound refuses to heal, it's either because it's too deep or because the wounded person has imprisoned themselves, unwilling to let go and embrace a new life. I'm grateful that Mina emerged from the shadows, and I didn't let myself become a savage and selfish person, avoiding the same mistakes as Sam did initially. Nothing is permanent, wounds heal. And even a life without money can change. Retrogrades are temporary. If your life is constantly filled with setbacks and hopelessness, Perhaps instead of asking if you've tried hard enough, ask yourself if you're on the right path.